What's up you guys? It's Katya Bulks. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hello, my name is Katya. Um, this is a very fitness style YouTube channel. Sometimes I will do mukbangs, do my food, all those kind of things. So if this topic brings you here today and you're interested in more things like this, then definitely click that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up so that I know you enjoy it. But yes, what we're going to be talking about today, now I will preface this series that I want to begin, that I've been planning for quite some time, in saying this is really more specific towards bodybuilding, not necessarily competing in bodybuilding, but someone who trains more of a bodybuilding style, that their goal is, if anything, more aesthetics um, than strength. I mean, of course, you can work on strength while doing what I'm going to be talking about, but if like aesthetics and like competing in bodybuilding is your sole purpose of lifting, then definitely just stay tuned and hear what I have to say as it's going to be very important. Um, so if you're someone who's into like Olympic lifting, calisthenics, this may not be the video for you, but if you're interested, please stay tuned and, and hopefully you'll get something out of it. So otherwise, I'm not going to be telling you guys, scrap the workout you're currently doing and just listen completely to me. Like, is this all taken... For, uh, with a grain of salt, uh, like you just take what you can from it, definitely, and learn. As I for have been lifting for years and, and always constantly learning. There may be something that I've done wrong yesterday that I'm going to learn tomorrow that I did incorrectly. You know, I'm always constantly learning and if I, you know, catch myself doing something wrong or have said something wrong, I will definitely, like, address that and I don't mind being wrong because that's the way you can learn from your mistakes kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, so definitely during this video I'm going to just be showing you kind of my workout so that it's just not all... I, mean, I know you love just seeing my face, but... so you don't get bored of me just sitting here talking and have something else to watch. We'll, we're gonna be talking about time under tension. So yeah, let's get into the workout and I'll voice over talking about time under tension and then through the series as well, I'm going to just say that we're going to go and split it up into body parts and how to optimize your workouts so that you can get the most for your body part because sometimes people go in doing exercises that it's not benefit, it's like, yeah, you can build muscle from it, but you're not doing the most for your body, as in you could be bigger doing something else, you know what I mean? Like just changing it up or doing something, it's... Oh, we're going to get into a lot of fun things. So definitely subscribe because we have a lot planned. Well, I do. I don't know what we as you guys, me. Yes. So let me just get to the talking and then, yeah. All right. So time under tension. Now, starting off, what is it, you know? So it's commonly used in strength and conditioning and bodybuilding. Um, it refers to how long a muscle is under strain during a set. So what you're essentially doing and why bodybuilders use it is because, well, during a prep, the last thing you want to do is injure yourself. So what's a way of pushing yourself so that you feel as though you're pushing more weight, but you're not. It's a way of like manipulating the body into thinking you're pushing more weight to strain those muscles, but lifting say lighter or medium heavy weight. So what it is, is just you're really focusing on the intensity and like how fast you're lifting. Because if you move a weight slower, it's, well, a lot harder. You know, when you see people bench and they're bouncing it off their chest, it's because it's like heavy and they're just trying to get it up as soon as possible. Ask that person to bench that same weight slowly. No, they're gonna fail it. So when people do time under tension, it's usually a set of reps that are a bit higher. So it's like 10 reps on it for an average lifter. And so it'll take them about 15 to 25 seconds depending on the lifting speed. Definitely also the best thing about time under tension is it allows you to focus really on the reps that you are doing so that you are performing them correctly. Because those people who are flinging weight around the gym and not really caring what they're doing I mean, they're at a much higher risk of injuring themselves and thus they're not really benefiting anything. Plus, if you're going to be doing like isolation movements, say like the biceps, and you're just 
trying to fling more weight and trying to do um, bicep curls, but like, oh, you want to be a bro and you want to like do the 30s instead of dropping and just doing the 20s. Well, guess what? You're you're going to be utilizing a lot of other muscles and not strictly concentrating on the bicep. That's why also picking certain exercises is really important as well when you're trying to implement like time under tension into your training. Like for example, a powerlifter can still use time under tension in their training. Like sure their ultimate goal is to push like a one rep max, but they can always knock down the weight and like make it so that it feels much heavier by by timing their sets and um, slowing down the reps that they push. So to minimize any chances of injuring themselves, especially when preparing for a competition. So definitely it can be utilized for those kind of athletes as well. I mean, of course with Olympic lifting, it's kind of different because you're literally flinging the weight above yourself, you know? Um, so it's kind of hard to implement it with that. So now going into how you can implement this and definitely tips on when you are implementing it is one, beware of the lockout. So what I mean by that is avoid spending a long amount of time, a long amount of time, sorry, during the easiest portion of the exercise, which is like, you know, say you're benching, it's the top of the bench. Um, so the easiest part of the lift presents the least amount of stress on your muscle. So try not to spend too much time up there and make it so that it's like a fluid movement. A second tip, try to maintain a steady tempo. So a typical tempo in seconds for each rep during a set would be like two, four, zero. So the lifting, lowering, and pausing. So you might lower it, um, lift it, like push it up like one, two, and then when you're lowering that weight on the like benching per se, um, you're counting to four. So it's a little longer when you're going down and a little faster when you're moving up. So you want to spend more time on the eccentric portion of the movement. So that refers to the lowering portion when your muscle is slowly elongating. Slowing down the eccentric portion of the lift causes more damage, muscle damage and hence encourages more growth. So boom, you get to build more muscle like and you're not having to push like crazy ass heavy weight. So I mean <laughs> I don't know if it's sold itself to you guys yet, but this is just, yeah, mind-blowing to me. But it shouldn't also be mind-blowing because this is something that bodybuilders have been using for years. If you've ever watched the movie The Perfect Physique, they talk about it in there. They talk about how they are prepping for a competition and the last thing they want to risk doing is injuring themselves or that can just screw up the whole chances of wherever they're going. Um, it was actually, um, who was it? Dennis James in the movie. So look out for him. He talks about time under tension and how they take a lighter weight and they manipulate it. So the time under tension, they're, I've said time under tension like a million times. I'm so sorry. But yes, they manipulate it so that your body feels as though it's lifting heavier weight. So it's tearing that muscle. So I'm sorry guys, but if your ultimate goal is like competing, physique, whatever, um, you, you know what, you, you don't want to risk hurting yourself. So you're going to have to drop the ego at the door when you walk into the gym and don't be afraid to use lighter weight. Because guess what, if you're looking bigger than the, next, the guy next to you, then why does it matter how much you're lifting? I mean, you're in the gym for you and bettering yourself. You're not bettering the person next to you, you're bettering yourself. Yes. It feels bomb AF when you get to lift more than the guy next to you, but congrats, you lift more than him, <laughs> you know? Unless you're a power lifter, like, it doesn't really matter. And even in power lifting, it's you versus you, you know? You can only be better, really, than yourself, and in that depic that's depicted by your training. And so that's why doing something like this will definitely help. So you definitely want to focus on your form, because with the longer sets, that you're doing now with time and attention, fatigue will set in and compromise your form. So make sure you do not cheat yourself and miss out on any gains for, by breaking form or doing partial reps. If anything, this is a time you can use drop sets. So say you're struggling to finish off those last few reps, guess what, drop the down the weight immediately and then just continue the exercise and then 
you'll last the entire duration of the set time and you won't need to cheat to get through it. So this is something I'll do maybe if my last set of like bench was it's just I couldn't get those last two reps. Either I will like do a cluster, I'll like rack it, rest for 10 seconds and then quickly unrack it and you know try to get them. If not, then and you don't have a spotter or something, then I definitely say, you know, drop down the weight, be safe. And then the last tip, you want to maintain a high intensity. Simply lifting till the buzzer doesn't guarantee increases in size. The weight in exercises need to be challenging enough to cause muscle fatigue towards the end of the set. So you're using about at least 60% of your one rep max for a lift to maximize your gains. So you're definitely pushing yourself. Don't just think, okay, so now this is an excuse to use lighter weight. Like, no, you're still pushing yourself a lot. Definitely your muscles will be shaking. If your muscles ain't shaking, are you, you know, I'm not gonna say you're not pushing yourself enough, but that's definitely your central nervous system noticing something different. When you shake during a workout, that's what's going on and it's a good sign because that means you're doing something your body's not quite used to, thus you're gonna be progressing further than the person who's doing the same workout they've been doing for the last year and have made no changes whatsoever. So within this series that I've decided to create for you guys, I'm definitely gonna go to into detail of like from the muscle types, you know, fast twitch, slow twitch, and the proper ways that you can utilize them to train them, to maximize growth, all that kind of kind of stuff, and talk about exercises you could definitely start implementing if say you've plateaued in your training yourself. So once again, this is something that can be definitely be utilized by everyone. I'm not saying that you have to. You can do your own research. If what you're doing is working for you, kudos. Stick to it. You know, if you have a coach and they're having you do certain workouts and notice yourself kind of plateau, don't be afraid to question them. And instead of like taking those workouts and just like scrapping them completely, you can manipulate them, like I said, with using time under tension. So I hope this was helpful. I'm so excited for the next videos to come out as this is just kind of the first of the, this new series. And I, yeah, I don't know what to say really. But yes, so give it a thumbs up if this was helpful for you guys. Definitely go watch that movie, The Perfect Physique, and listen to what those guys have to say. Not everything is like perfect, because they talk about some things that you're just like, oh, that's so funny that they believe in that, and whatnot. But it's great to hear it from professional bodybuilders on how they train and their style of thinking. It's just very, I don't know, interesting to me. So definitely subscribe because we got more videos coming out. And yeah, you can check out my social media. I don't know. But I love you all. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.